ओम नमो भगवते भासुदेवाय Today we're reading from Shrimad Bhagavatam, 10th Canto, 83rd chapter, Draupadi meets the Queens of Krishna. And we're reading text number 27, 28. 27 is on the board. Dividundu bayone dur Jaya shabda yuta bhuvi Devascha kusama saran Mumuchur harsha vivalaha Dividundu bayone dur Jaya shabda yuta bhuvi Devascha kusuma saran Mumuchur harsha vivalaha Divi in the sky Dundu bhayaha, kettle drums. Neduhu, resounded. Jaya, victory. Shabda, the sound. Yutaha, together with. Bhuvi, on the earth. Devaha, demigods. Cha, and. Kusuma, of flowers, asaran, torrents, mumuchuhu, released, harsha, with joy, vihvalaha, overwhelmed. Translation, kettle drums resounded in the sky and on the earth people shouted, jai, jai, overjoyed demigods showered flowers. Text 28. Just then I walked onto the ceremonial ground, the ankle bells on my feet gently tinkling. I was wearing new garments of the finest silk, tied with a belt, and I carried a brilliant necklace fashioned of gold and jewels. There was a shy smile on my face and a wreath of flowers in my hair. Purport. Srila Sridhar Swami states that Sri Lakshmana was so excited by remembering how she obtained the Supreme Lord, that she forgot her natural shyness and went on to describe her own triumph. Om Jnana Timarandasya Gananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Minitam Jena Tasmai Sri Gurave Namaha Sri Chaitanya Manobhistam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Svayam Rupakada Mayam Dadati Svapadantikam Jayasi Krishna Chaitanya Prabhunityananda Siyadvaita Giradhar Srivasari Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Mukam Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Mukam Karotiva Chalam Pangum Langaite Girim Yat Kripadam Maham Vande Sri Guru Dinotaranam Paramananda Madhavam Si Chitanya Shuram Panchakalpatarubhyascha Kripasindubhyevacha Patitanam Pavanebhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Namaha <coughs> Can you move this? <coughs> Thank you. Hare Krishna. So here in this particular section we hear of the different marriages of Lord Krishna. Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead and he married 16,108 queens. Here in Kurukshetra, everybody is assembling and the eight principal queens are telling their story. 
And in the previous verses, every queen spoke one verse. And here Lakshmana is speaking 22 verses about her wedding. And the Acharyas explain that is because she got so excited about remembering how Krishna married her that she forgot about her natural shyness. So today, we'll attempt to speak about shyness, humility, dependence, and absorption. Now, we are unqualified to talk about these topics for obvious reasons. But as Vishwanath Chakravarti Pad is explaining or praising the Vaishnavas, he's saying in the introduction to the 87th chapter of the 10th canto, before he starts commenting on the prayers of the Vedas personified, after he has given already elaborate commentaries on 10th canto. You have read Sharata Darshani, these very beautiful commentaries of Vishwana Chakravarti Pad. He is saying that even though I know nothing about jewels, I'm speaking like a very knowledgeable, a very eloquent person, like a jewel merchant, but I know nothing about jewels. But my desire is that I may at least entertain the Vaishnavas. So, I have a similar <laughs> mood because these meditations, these realizations are very exalted. They're very elevated. And for us to attempt to elaborate on them is quite impossible. But we're trying to focus on what we have read by Srila Prabhupada and the previous Acharyas and to give some insight. So, Lakshmana, she's very absorbed. She's very absorbed in meditating on Krishna and speaking about Krishna's glories and Krishna's exquisite beauty and his activities and how he uh, won her heart. Now you might say, how can this young girl know about Krishna? How can she know about Krishna? She's living under the care of her parents. She is not going anywhere. She has never met Krishna. How does she know about this boy? Narada Muni had visited her father's kingdom on several occasions and had praised Krishna and given elaborate description of Krishna's beauty, Krishna's activity, Krishna's pastimes, Krishna's exquisite features. So simply by hearing from the pure devotee, she became so attracted that she made up her mind. It's Krishna and no one else. In a similar way, <clears throat> we can also, by hearing about Krishna from pure devotees, we can also make up our mind. And this is very important, because nowadays there are many options, right? You have many options on the stock market of what to buy, where to go. Like you all have your devices, your apps, right? And then it says go, okay? You have to press go. So where do you want to go? You can be go dasa, huh? or you can be Krishna dasa. Huh? So if you press go, then usually you're go dasa. You're the servant of the senses. So manoratena satadava tobahi. Wherever the chariot of your mind takes you, that's where you can go. Hmm? But a devotee is a person who is trying to connect his or her life with Krishna through the process of bhakti, through devotional service. So they're trying to please Krishna, to give pleasure to Krishna, to connect their lives with Krishna in a meaningful way. 
just like Lakshmana. As a princess, she had many options. And because of her status, because of her beauty, because of her wealth, there was many opportunities for her in life. But she made up her mind, it's Krishna and no one else. So, in a similar way, we also should make up our mind. Hmm? Now, of course, some of us may think my options are limited. Hmm? But still, on the chariot of our mind, the options are quite unlimited. Huh? And everybody wants to go places, meet people, and experience so many things of this world. But a devotee is a person who is seeking the essence and trying to see what is the connection with Krishna. So Lakshmana was very happy <clears throat> describing in a very absorbed way about her uh, wedding with Krishna. <clears throat> so, in these two verses, it is shown how she was walking and she was looking very shyly, with shy glances. She was beholding the Lord. Hmm? So shyness, it is sa vrida. Hmm? It is a quality that often is attributed to women. Now I'm sure this baby has a mother. Thank you. We have a lost baby here. So, shyness is attributed to ladies usually. <clears throat> and we could go on speaking about the stri dharma of what are the qualities of a lady and what a lady has to do. Take care of her children, take care of her husband, do her duties, etc., etc. But that's not the class we want to give today. Because in Mahabharat, it is explained that shyness is one of the twelve qualities of a Brahmin. And as such, it applies to all of us. Even though we may be in a different trade, we may be in a different occupation, but because we are practicing Krishna consciousness, we're all trying to become Brahminical. We're all trying to elevate ourselves to the higher consciousness, to the higher state of Krishna consciousness. The shyness also applies to each and every one of us. Now you may say, how can a Brahmin be shy? Because he's on the top. He is the most learned. He is the most advanced. He's the most respected in society. But the smartest people should also be the humblest people. Because knowledge is supposed to make one humble. Otherwise, one has missed the point. Uh, one has missed the point. And this has been explained by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to Keshmar, Keshava Kashmiri and others. Uh, that actually, when one is blessed with knowledge, one has to make sure that one keeps focus, one keeps on target, one keeps humility a primary quality. It is not a secondary quality. It is a primary quality. Shyness is an expression of humility. It's a way how humility is expressed. Shyness sometimes is also called as bashfulness or as the mood of not wanting to put oneself in front of others, not wanting to dominate, not wanting to be in the center of things, but to keep oneself out of the center. Huh? So, people may think, oh, this is cultural conditioning, like you have this in India, because somehow that's your cultural conditioning, or in Asia. But in the West, we have a different culture. But we're not speaking about East or West. We're not talking about ancient and modern. But we're talking about real culture, which means Krishna's culture. 
So we have high class, we have low class, and we have no class. So we're going to focus a little bit on this. <clears throat> a humble person understands that I'm very small. The 10,000th tip of the size of a hair. So, technically speaking, infinitesimal, minute, and actually quite insignificant. There's 7 billion human beings on the planet. So, what is our greatness? Huh? We cannot control much. We cannot do much. We cannot even perceive much. Huh? So, an intelligent person actually naturally develops this humility. It, it comes because of the knowledge of being aware, which shows that if you actually want to be humble, you need to have knowledge about your actual position. Otherwise, it's very easy to become proud over some meaningless, some meaningless things. Uh, no need to get into that. Uh, so, <clears throat> we see when Maharaj Yudhisthira was performing the Rajasuya sacrifice, Krishna himself took charge of washing the feet of all the attendants. How many people attended the Rajasuya sacrifice? Approximately? Any wild estimate? A lot of people. Yes, that's correct. A lot of people attended. And Krishna, who had connections, I mean, he knew the person who was running the show, he knew Maharaj Yudhisthira, so he could have chosen any type of seva. But he said, no, 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 I will do this seva. Why? Because he knew that most likely nobody will volunteer for this seva. But he also knew that Maharaj Yudhisthira is my dear friend and devotee. And if there is nobody to, to properly take care of the guest, it will be a great blemish. It will be a great blunder. So he did not want Maharaj Yudhisthira to feel anxious or that there is some discredit to this Rajasuya sacrifice. So Krishna took charge of washing the feet of all the attendants. <coughs> You also know that Jesus, he washed the feet of his disciples and drowned him with his own cloth. To give an example, to show to each and every one of us that to serve others, especially to serve devotees, is not a duty, is a privilege. Huh? I was once in Amritsar and I went to Golden Temple and I met some people working at the shoe stall. They were business people from America. And they said, we flew first class from U.S. to Amritsar. And we're staying in five-star hotel to be able to do shoe seva at the shoe stall for two weeks. That was their vacation. Huh? Flying first class, staying in five-star hotel, but doing chapel seva in shoe stall. They considered this is the, this is the peak of our year. We're allowed to do this service. So, there's a lot to learn. Now, in different cultures, there's different attitudes. In the West, they say, in German, they say, Du sollst den Tag nicht vor dem Abend loben, which means you shouldn't praise the day before the evening has arrived, because you never know what's going to happen. Some people say you should not brag unless you're on the way home, which means you already conquered, you already done the job. So, then you can brag, then you can, you know, but when Krishna, Arjuna, and Bhima Sen went and they conquered Jarasandha by some very interesting arrangement, huh? they actually managed. But when they came back, it would be very easy for them to be very excited about the victory. Jarasandha, 27 battles, so much fighting, so much hardship. But what did they do? The Acharya said that they were very excited, but they were simply praising each other and deflecting. They were giving the credit to the other person. So Krishna was praising Bhima Sen and Arjun 
Arjuna was praising Krishna and Bhima saying, in this way, they would just, you know, pass it on, pass it on. So in the same way, when some credit comes our way, we can always just pass it up or pass it on. We say, okay, this is the credit of my spiritual master, of my friends. It's the credit of my team. It's the credit of, you know, of others. Because that is true humility. To understand it was not my doing. I just happened to be there. Like that. So also at the end of her 22 verses, in the last verse, we just give you a little preview, sneak preview. She's going to praise the other queens. Because they may think, who is this Lakshmana? You know, in chapter 58, there is one verse about her. The chapter is entitled, Krishna marries five princesses. Her name is not even there uh, in the chapter. But here she's speaking 22 verses in very detailed, elaborate description of her glorious wedding with Krishna. Now, who was the oldest amongst all the queens? Anybody can guess? Who was the oldest of all the queens? Now, Rukmini was the principal queen. Number one. But the oldest. Jambavati. How old was she? She was around since the time of Lord Ramachandra. So she could say, I'm senior here. You know? I'm, I'm senior most. Rukmini could say, I'm number one. She's number eight. Who does she think she is? But they were all so happy hearing about Krishna that they completely forgot all these kind of material estimations. Srinvatas Vakata Krishna Punya Shravana Kirtana Hridyantakstohya Badrani Vidunoti Surit Satam. When a devotees hear and chant about Krishna, all the abhajas, all the unwanted things, they become removed from the heart. And whatever is superfluous, whatever is a disturbance actually gets eliminated. Therefore the devotees always are eager to get together and hear and chant about Krishna. Also in the third verse of this chapter, it says O oh Master, how can misfortune rise for those who have even once freely drunk the nectar coming from your lotus feet? This intoxicating liquor pours into the drinking cups of their ears, having flowed from the minds of great devotees through their mouths. It destroys the embodied soul's forgetfulness of the creator of their bodily existence. So a devotee is a person who is always very eager to hear about Krishna. Where is that Krishna Kata going on? There's two kinds of Krishna Kata. Bhagavad Gita spoken by Krishna and Srimad Bhagavatam where the devotees are narrating about Krishna and Krishna's pastimes. So we should always be eager to hear this kind of Kata because in this way we can actually experience Krishna. How do we experience Krishna? Hmm? Through the here. Huh? Guru Karnadharan. By paying attention, we can actually experience Krishna through the transcendental sound vibration, which is non different from Krishna. And in this way, we are always united with Krishna. Now, humility. <clears throat> if you look up humility today in the dictionary, you will find many things. People feel inadequate, people feel depressed, people feel. Uh, low self-esteem. There's a lot of negative connotations. So if you write your CV, you know, curriculum vitae, if you write your CV for your job interview, don't put, I'm a humble guy. You won't get the job. I can guarantee you. You won't get hired, okay? Which may be a good thing. Depends on, you know, what your aspirations are in life. But... Humility is not scoring very high. People want to hear about assertiveness. Yes, he can get the job done, right? Like when you hear 
about Westerners. You think they're very loud, they're very assertive, they're very rash, they're very outspoken. And when you hear East, you think like, oh, gentle, soft, kind, spoken, you know, kind of eh, like that, right? But formerly, and formerly means just one or two generations ago, even in the West, humility and shyness was considered a virtue. It was considered something very extraordinary, something exalted. So this shows that just in a short period of time, things can change. Now we can see how all the youth is going to the gym to get fit and buff. And in America especially, I have seen personal experience how the youth is going to martial arts classes, especially from Asian and Indian families, the children. So he will have little Abhishek Joshi, the guy is this skinny. You can see his dad was a Brahmin, his, his granddad was a Brahmin, and he should be a Brahmin. But he has to go to karate class. He can hardly carry his gloves, you know. He's so skinny. And he's so embarrassed because he's shy. But he has to learn how to scream and shout and kick and punch. Why? Because his dad and his mom think little Abhishek Joshi has to get ahead in the game. He has to be faster than all these other kids who came here. So therefore he has to learn how to kick and shout and, you know, make his mark in the world. But again, in traditional cultures, if you were humble, if you were shy, people would actually prefer such type of personalities. They would say, yeah, he's a team player. He will take others' opinions. He will know how to give credit and importance to others. He will, you know, he will see the bigger picture. It won't just be about himself. He won't be an egomaniac. And people would actually recruit and hire and select according to these kind of qualities. So in Vedic culture, humility and shyness are very much very much a natural characteristic, and not just of the woman class, but of every class. Now, it manifests in slightly different ways, in a Brahmin, in a Kshatriya, in a Vaishya, in a Shudra, but they're principles that we need to study so we learn how to imbibe them in our own lives. And we'll speak about that more, how to imbibe them. Now, she's casting sidelong glances, huh? Casting sidelong glances. And that's a very <clears throat> elevated topic. And we're not qualified to speak about all the different type of glances that are going on between Krishna and his queens and Krishna and the gopis, because that's way beyond our pay grade, personally speaking. But we can only tell what we heard from our acharyas. Srila Prabhupada once said, in Mayapur, Srimati Radharani, she's holding her hand like this which means she is dancing. And that means Krishna cannot leave. Because when Radharani is dancing, Krishna cannot leave. He has to stay there because he is fully absorbed in her dancing. And at the same time, sidelong glances are being exchanged. So, it is explained that when the gopis saw Krishna in Kurukshetra, They took in his beauty, and in their core of their hearts, they embraced Krishna. And Krishna reciprocated, and he returned the embrace. So it was complete. They did not speak up. They did not rush to the front. But they were satisfied. Now the the gopis are in Vrindavan. How far is Mathura from Vrindavan? It's not very far, right? Sometimes on, you know, when you do parikrama, you do the bigger parikrama. So you can walk around. It's it's possible. But even though they knew Krishna is in Mathura, they did not go to Mathura. Why? Because they knew that Krishna has... He has gone to Mathura. (coughs) And he has new friends there. 
and he has different type of lifestyle and different type of occupation there. We are satisfied to be here in Vrindavan. And we are half Krishna in our heart of hearts. And we'll never let go of Krishna. And because of that, because of that determination, they have captured Krishna in the core of their hearts. And Krishna can never escape. Premanjana Churita Bhakti Vilochanena Santaksa Daiva Hridayeshu Vilokayanti Yam Shyama Sundara Machintya Gunaksvarupam Govinda Madi Purusham Tamaham Bajami If the eyes are anointed with the salve of love of Godhead, then one can actually see Krishna. So casting glances, there are different type of glances. Many people come to the Lord for different types of reasons. Some people come here and they think, Oh, why so much Opulence. Why so much gorgeous arrangement? Huh? Why does he have all the opulence? Why not me? People become envious. Like Shishupal. Like Jarasandha. Like Duryodhan. Whenever they saw Krishna and his friends, they got envious. And it became very disturbing to them. So there was envy in their glance. Huh? Then... There's other types of glances. Like we know Gandhari. She's a very powerful lady. She performed austerity. So, by her glance, she could make her son almost invincible. She could burn somebody's feet. Just by her glance. Then, we have... The wives of Krishna, they have a glance. It is explained in the Bhagavatam that when Krishna got up in the morning and after performing his duties as a dutiful husband and householder king, he had to go to office. He had to go to do the job. But he almost could not leave. Because his wives were casting shy, sidelong glances. And because of those shy, sidelong glances, they captured Krishna. And he could hardly leave. He could hardly get away. Huh? So this shows to us that when there is actual humility, when there is actual shyness, Krishna is very attracted. Krishna is very captivated by that. But what does that humility mean? It means there has to be knowledge about the greatness of the person. There has to be actual knowledge about the greatness of the person. And there has to be <clears throat> dependence. Because once you know somebody is very great and I'm very small, it means I'm dependent on them. So naturally, I am I'm dependent. Huh? Just like where I stay, very close by, there is a small baby girl. She's just a couple of months old. And by the sound of her voice, by her screaming, I can realize that she feels very dependent on her mother. Because she realizes, I only have mother, so there's nothing else for me. So her cry is very intense and very captivating. So in the same way, if we also cry out to Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. And yes, cast sidelong glances. Huh? Not staring. Huh? Not, you know, frowning. Of course, there are different types of rasas, different types of relationships that we will not elaborate on right now. But when we have this de mood of dependency, of utter dependence on the Lord, and Krishna will be attracted. He will feel obliged. And he will reciprocate with the devotee. In the 86th chapter of the 10th canto, there's a beautiful verse that I would like to read. One can gradually become purified by seeing, touching, and worshipping temple deities, places of pilgrimage, and holy rivers. But one can attain the same result immediately simply by receiving the glance of exalted sages. 
What's that verse? That other famous shloka? About, you know, you can go to the holy places of pilgrimage, you can take bath, but actually you should just seek out the sages. What's that other shloka? How does it start? Don't be shy. Shout. Yadatma budit kuna petri datuke thabama ichadi. No, not that one. So, <clears throat> you see, I take notes, but I write them too small because I write them when I have my reading glasses on. But then you forget your reading glasses. <laughs> and then the notes means nothing, you know. It looks like Chinese. <laughs> Has it ever happened to you? You know, you can hardly see the key points. You know, it's like just all like, huh? you cannot penetrate. Hmm? So, you may know so much, but then when the exam comes, you forget. Huh? You may be in a very exalted position, just like this tin sheet out there. It is very high because it's meant to be the roof, right? The tin, that tin shed. But there is no absorption. Why there is no absorption? Because it's hard. So in the same way, I may be in an elevated, in an exalted situation, but if my heart is heart, if it is steel and frame, then the nectar of Krishna Kata cannot penetrate. I have to become soft somehow. This softening process has to happen. Just like when you eat rasgulla. Do you like rasgulla? Yeah? Good. Good. Just checking. Huh? I went yesterday on Marine Drive, and there is this kulfi wala, you know, the guy who sells kulfi. Huh? So he was not interested, but then I started talking about Mahaprasad, and then, and then his face lit up, and he started speaking about Rasgulla. And then he became convinced, and he bought the book, and he gave the donation. So you all know, Rasgulla has to absorb the juice. Now here we have very expert cooks, so you don't have experience. But in the West, sometimes you get Rasgulla like golf ball, you know. <laughs> it is just... Sitting in sugar juice. But you take one bite and you think, can I finish this? I don't think I can finish this. Because it's too hard, you know. And there's no sponginess. Like if dokla is too hard, how much can you can eat? Hardly one piece, right? Now if dokla is spongy and it's got the proper stuff, how many doklas you can eat? Huh? Unlimited, practically, right? Unless the server says... Three pieces, not more. Limited. Huh? So, in the same way, if I'm hard, if I'm hard-hearted, even though there is so much Krishna Kata, but it will go like the, the, the monsoon rain on the tin foil. It will just drop off. There is no absorption. Now, geologists have made elaborate studies how much water do you have to put into a desert to turn it into an oasis so you can start growing? A lot. A lot of water. Huh? But if you want to actually successfully cultivate, you learn everything in Bhagavatam class. If you want to successfully cultivate, you have to plant suitable plants which will have roots, which will keep the moisture, the humidity and the water in the ground. Because if you don't have proper foliage, proper plants, the water will simply drain and go away. So unless this bhakti lata beach, unless this creeper of devotional service is deeply, firmly implanted in the soil of our heart, the Krishna kata, whatever we hear, we will not be able to absorb and retain. It will just go off on us like water on the back of a duck. So once we actually cultivate this creeper, huh? we know from Chaitanya Charitamrita that by the mercy of Guru Krishna Prasad Ebhai Bhakti Lata Beach, that that seed is sown by the mercy uh, of the spiritual master. But to get mercy of the spiritual master is not such a cheap thing. It's not that you can just, you know, send requests, SMS, text message to this number and you will get. No. You have to qualify. We have to qualify ourselves for that. That is by rendering service to the devotees, rendering service to the Vaishnavas. Just like yesterday I was 
reading with one very dear and close friend of mine about the Beda Kirtan pastimes of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And how Maharaj Prataparudra in Puri, he was very anxious, he was very worried, because he wanted to meet Lord Chaitanya, but he could not, because he was a king. And he was in such a great anxiety that he was ready to give up his kingdom, he was ready to give up his opulence, he was ready to give up his life, because he could not meet Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. But as Prabhupada explains in the purport, by a Vaishnava scheme, by a, huh? a ruse, you can say, by a diversion, a roundabout trick, he got the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Why? Because he was serving the devotees. He said to Ramananda Roy, so you like to serve Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, you don't want to come to office? Okay, full pension. I give you full pension because I appreciate your service to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So when Lord Chaitanya heard that, okay, he, you know, his ear grew. Huh? So Sarvabhom Bhattacharya and others, Ramananda Roy, they were feeding this type of information to Lord Chaitanya. And his heart was softening. He was saying, yeah, I'm sure Krishna will give him his mercy. Yeah, someday soon he will, he will, he will attain his desire. And very soon after that, he got the object of his desire. Because he depended on the mercy of the Vaishnavas. Huh? So in a similar way, if we develop attraction by selfless and humble service to the Vaishnavas, we can actually get the mercy, we can actually get the attention of the spiritual master. Now, spiritual master is always teaching us, always teaching us, sometimes by directly instructing, sometimes through his students, sometimes through his uh, books, sometimes in dreams, uh, sometimes he may speak to us. So, Srila Prabhupada, he always mentioned that my Gurudev has never been away from me. He's always right there with me. He never saw that there is a geographical or a time lapse between his guru's departure. He always felt he's right there with me. So one time we were in Italy with Srila Radhanath Maharaj and he was about to give initiation. And before going and sitting on the Vyasa San, he sat next to me and he said, now you have to pray for me. And then he went and he gave initiation. And I was thinking, why does he say that, you know? Like, why does he say that? I'm, I'm nobody. I'm... So he's showing me that you should become humble. Because, <laughs> because it's not about you, you know? They came not for you, they came for me. They're taking initiation from me. But I am asking you, to pray for me. So, it kind of takes a while to sink in and to click, you know. But, or like when spiritual master says, I am so happy to be with you and there is nowhere else that I'd rather be at this moment. Some people think, oh, this sounds like a nice way of saying things, right? It sounds like a nice speech, Something you can just... But it's not... If it doesn't come from the heart, if it's not honest, if it's not carried, it doesn't carry that weight, it will come across in a very strange, in a very, you know... If you know a person would rather be anywhere else but here, but they say, you know, oh, I, there's no other place I'd rather be but here. You can immediately feel it, sense it. But because devotees are, pure devotees are so humble, they're satisfied in whichever situation, in whichever position, in whichever place that they're in. And they don't want to be in the center of attention. Huh? That is Krishna consciousness. That is Vedic culture. That's why humility and shyness are so important. Huh? Now, 
One time we were walking in Moscow on Red Square. And there was a lot of police, but they were all ladies in short skirts with makeup. And they were carrying little sticks. So I turned to Guru Maharaj and I said, you know, there's so much police here. You see, that is not police. It's just some Mataji with a stick. It's just a Mataji with a stick. So, the point is that we should not try to take a role or to be somebody that we're not. Formerly, people had culture. So, there was some respect. There was some social dealings and interaction. Nowadays, you walk on Marine Drive, every girl will try to look into your eyes. I can guarantee you, you walk on Marine Drive, everybody will want to look in your eyes. Nobody looks away, nobody looks at the floor or at the feet. Everybody wants to look in their eyes. And not just like, hello, I'm here, but like, hey, I'm here, okay? I'm here. Do you see me? I'm here. You know what I'm talking about? Or is this too American for you? Have you had experience? I think you have. Because this place is becoming more American than America. Because in America, people don't wear Ray-Ban sunglasses anymore. Am I right? This is gone, you know? People are not wearing blue jeans anymore. This was the 80s, you know? This is gone. But the new crows are very ecstatic about trying to become something. So the Bangladeshis want to become Indians, and the Indians want to become Americans, and the Americans want to go to Mars, and everybody is kind of lost, you know? They're kind of somewhere where they shouldn't be. Yeah? They should be here paying attention to the Bhagavatam. But because their mind, their chariot of the mind goes very fast. So what happens when a woman is very aggressive? There is two choices. One choice is that she will find a man who likes an aggressive woman because he likes to exploit women. And it's very easy to exploit aggressive women. Or she will find a man who is like a woman, because she is playing the role of a man, so then, you know, you have to match it up. So she will get a guy who is like a woman, which is kind of a mismatch, unless that's what you want. So, if we want to become happy and satisfied in life, we have to pay attention about what is proper culture. Otherwise, we'll miss the boat. And we will be very sorry. So, Yes, yes, the Bhaktir Bhagavati Akinchana, Savrair Gunais Tatra Samasate Suraha, Harava Bhakta Sekuto Mahat Gunat, Manoa Tena Sati Dava Tobahi. People may claim that they're so educated, they're so advanced, they have so many great uh, accreditations. But if there is no bhakti, if there is no devotion, it is all simply for naught. It is useless. Shrama eva hi kevalam. It is a pure waste of time. Now sometimes people come to the Krishna consciousness movement and they say, oh, things were a little austere, things were a little rough, things were not so refined, it wasn't very professional. Have you heard these kind of comments? But the question should be, was there bhakti? Was Krishna there? Because if Krishna is there, everything else is okay. Everything is fine. And if Krishna is not there, even though you may be on the topmost planet, what's the point? It's simply a matter of time till you will again fall down. Huh? So devotees are seeking for the essence. They're looking for Krishna. Where is Krishna? Where is Krishna? And in these pages of Srimad Bhagavatam, we have, we have gotten huh, Krishna by the mercy of the Acharyas. So cultured people don't want to draw attention to themselves. They don't like to draw attention to themselves. Unless your job occupation is that you are a joker, or a clown, or a prostitute, then it's acceptable. You have to draw attention to yourself, because that's your job. But otherwise, if you're in any other trade, 
cultured people do not want to draw attention to themselves. But they want to deflect. They want to pass on the credit. That's why we put Krishna in the center. I mean, anybody who wears a turban like this must be God. Have you ever wondered? And Krishna dances with this turban. And it still looks perfect. That's God. Huh? Sometimes I wonder, like, you know, how, how does he keep it up there? You know, like, how, how does it all stay in one place? Huh? And Krishna does all kinds of things wearing this turban. Huh? So, our ability to absorb and to retain can increase when our heart becomes more soft. In the association of Vaishnavs, by seeing their examples, we, we develop affinity, we develop affection, we develop appreciation. And we think, yes, let me also try. Let me also try to follow in this person's footsteps. Like in previous days, speakers, we saw one person was so absorbed, he was attempting to give a whole Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu overview in Bhagavatam class. I don't want to mention any names. I don't want to embarrass anybody. But, you know, it's a big book, and it's, it's a big topic. <laughs> Rasa Shastra. It's very de detailed and elaborate. And in very short time, he gave a lot of information, and he got so excited about speaking, you could see how he became possessed. Not only by knowledge, but by prema, by ecstasy, that he forgot time and place and circumstance. It's quite inspiring to see devotees who get so carried away being absorbed in Krishna. So, we have hope. Our aspiration is that simply by association we can imbibe some of these qualities and we can develop real humility. Uh, false humility is, oh, I was thinking so highly of myself, but now I'm frustrated, I can't do it, so now it's all bad. Uh, Prabhupada made that joke. Big, big monkey, big, big belly. Lanka jumping, melancholy. Uh, he's thinking I'm a big guy, uh, and I can really do stuff. But then you ask them to jump. You ask them, sir, can you take this book and give small donation? They say, no, 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 can't do. Why can't do? Oh, you know, today is the wrong day of the week, or, you know, we have this 21 days, we cannot do this and that. And they give you a hundred reasons. We'll only give at the office, we'll only give at the temple. You know, so many reasons why they cannot do. Huh? But a devotee, when they get the opportunity for service, they're very eager they're very much eager for service. Just like Prataparudra Maharaj was very much eager for service to the devotees. And because of that eagerness, his stock, his chances of meeting Chaitanya Mahaprabhu just very much increased. Because honestly speaking, you can meet the Lord in service. It is not that you have to sit at the same table and, you know, crack jokes over dinner with somebody to actually get some uh, association with them. You can get their full, the full experience, the full rasa can be there. Just like the gopis. They had the highest love, the highest realization, and the highest experience simply by glancing at Krishna, embracing Him in the core of their hearts, and they were fully satisfied. Huh? Now, Nanda Maharaj, he was in Kurukshetra for three months. And every day he would say, in the morning, I will leave in the afternoon. And in the afternoon he would say, I will leave tomorrow. And this was going on for three months. Because he, he just couldn't leave. He was just too, too much in love 
with Krishna and with Vasudeva and all the devotees that were there. So we have also been here for three months now. And even though we like to stay, we're supposed to go, but we can't go, so we have to stay. So <laughs> we are under the spell of Durga. Huh? Durga. Huh? Durgama. She makes going very difficult. But if you have the blessings of the Vaishnavas, then going becomes very easy. Very, uh. So we humbly pray to get your merciful glance, sidelong or otherwise, and that we can move on and go do our seva. <laughs> because we feel inadequate. We feel uh, misplaced. But somehow by Krishna's mercy, we're allowed to be here and to get your association, and to see so many uh, wonderful Vaishnavs who are deeply absorbed in service to Guru and Krishna. So I'd like to thank all of you for your tolerance, your patience, and your hospitality, especially the people who work in the guest department. Previous, present, and future. There's a lot of turnover in that, in that division, you know. <laughs> I'm already, you know, uh, speaking for the next generation to come. Uh, we have time for one or two questions or reflections. Today's Dvarasi, so we should not keep you waiting. The Brahmachari has already had breakfast, so they're peaceful. But for the rest of you. Thank you all very much. Srimad Bhagavatam ki, Srila Prabhupada ki, Nitai Gaur Pramanandi.